Hey everybody, good morning. It's Chuck. I was in the bees this morning and boy, they are looking good. Here we are at the beginning of February. Grafting uh, is about two weeks away. February 14th is what I'm targeting right now. And that is basically the subject of today's video. Um, I am submitting this video also as part of my master beekeeper certification uh, for part of the process of queen rearing. So Mary, if you're watching, thank you for watching. Um, what this is about is timing. Timing of your first graft day and the entire process. There's a little bit of math involved with when you need to graft, when you need to put into the starter, when you need to put into the finisher, when you need to pull out of the finisher, uh, and all of these things. And it can get a little overwhelming um, if you don't have a process and a methodology to do that. Uh, obviously the beginning phase of that is getting the starter built. Uh, I showed you guys this starter I made a few weeks ago. Um, and what this is, is a regular nuke box just with frames, but with a little addition. It's just a, an addition on the bottom to give ventilation for the copious amounts of bees that a good starter needs. So I'm just gonna overwhelm this nucleus box with brood, pollen, food, and nurse bees uh, to the point that they actually need this additional ventilation. They will also be contained into this box. This is not going to be a free-flying starter that I'm gonna use this year. Uh, so they'll need some water and of course food in here in the form of either sugar water or a honey frame with nectar, open nectar on it. Uh, but that is one of the processes. Um, so in order to get this going, uh, I use a technique that I picked up from Jason Chrisman. Uh, he has made videos for years. If you don't uh, check, haven't checked his out, please do that uh, as credit for getting me started on this. Um, but it's by creating a calendar and it's called the Qu Queen Rearing Calendar. Um, and it's using a Google Sheet or an Excel spreadsheet and it just helps you update and uh, keep track of the days and timing of this. Um, so that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna head inside, go in front of the green screen, and I'll, I'll pull up the queen rearing calendar, and we'll talk a little bit about how uh, my first graphs of the year are gonna start and how I use the calendar to coordinate that. All right, so let's go inside. All right, we're back inside in front of the green screen. Hopefully you can see me okay. Uh, I've got a screen recording going of my queen rearing calendar that I have. Uh, I will put a link to a clean version of this uh, in the description of this video for those of you that want to pick up on this, uh, perhaps modify it, make it your own, um, and perhaps keep track of it. But let me just walk you through what this basically does. Um, most everything around queen rearing pivots around graft day. Graph day uh, is used in this upper left-hand corner. You enter a field in here. I can double click on this and I can make it the 17th or I can enter it manually if I want it. I can come back and enter it uh, on the 14th. But what you notice, this date, up graph day up in the upper left-hand corner, all the dates of this calendar pivot around that day. And actually you see graph day is right here on line seven uh, with this green, graph the day old larva into cell cups and insert the, in them into a queenless starter colony. So with this calendar and the dates that go around graph day, it allows me to, uh, who also has a full-time job, to plan my grafting around my life schedule and the, the work days I might have, or perhaps just know the days and the weather that uh, looks like uh, good target days in order to do some grafting. Uh, a few other things on here. The, the left-hand column is the age of the larva. So you see up here on the very first lay, the queen lays the egg is one day old and down on line seven uh, is when graft day is. And typically we want to graft three and a half day old larva. So obviously the time of day that you choose those larva is based on that line. And then goes all the way down uh, through the evolution of that larva into turning into a queen. Now, I just showed you outside my starter colony. The starter colony is the hive that you will put the grafted larva into, and these bees need to be queenless, they need to be in the emergency mode, and also have a little bit of swarm impulse due to overcrowding. They need to be well fed, and they need to be young nurse bees. Um, there's lots of ways of doing a starter, and that's not the subject of this um, video. Uh, you can make a, a separate nuke starter like I showed you, or you can make a hive queenless using a double screen board, or you can pull some out to make a starter. But the reason I mentioned the starter is the starter needs to be ready for your grafts after you graft them. So if you see um, right here on line uh, 7 with the date of 214, I'm putting the grafted larva into the starter. Now that starter needs to be queenless for 
minimum of eight to 12 hours, but typically about a day is what most people do. They set up the starter the day before, and you see here on the line three, uh, I'm sorry, line six, on day old three on the 13th, cr create a queenless starter hive for graphs tomorrow. That is the reminder to start that starter. Now, you can make a starter up to a week prior, and that queen, uh, that hive will be queenless, and they will start making queen cells if they have any uh, larvae of the correct age, and that is satisfactory also. So the date you make the starter can go from the day prior all the way to about a week prior, and at that point, they will be hopelessly queenless, but when you put the grafts in at that point, you need to go in and cut out any queen cells that they've started. That's just the important difference there. So I could have another line that backs up all the way to a week on this chart saying, you know, seven days prior to grafting for the starter colony range. Now, you see here on Thursday the 15th, move cells into finisher 24 hours after the starter. That's when the cells have been started. It goes on in here. Now, the last thing I want to mention is this red section down here uh, on the 20th and 21st. This is the part that is good to not mess with the bees. Very little um, movement of the cells because this is the point where the queen's wings are developing. And if she gets dislodged inside the cell, she ultimately will not make it as a queen. She'll either be deformed or will not survive. So that's an important part called the sensitive developing stage. Now, over here in the column B here, I highlight the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you uh, have Fridays off, you can highlight whatever days you want. And this is how I also use this to decide when I'm going to graph. So I know when I'm going to be home for sure or not traveling to move them into the finisher and also to move them into mating nukes. Now down here on line 17, on the 24th, move the capped queen cells into mating nukes. That's a pretty important day because the very next day, the earliest queen cells will be hatching. If I don't have them in an incubator and I need to have them in nuke cells and the nukes uh, for mating, I've got to be home on that day. That's why I've got that one lodged right there on maybe a Saturday. So I know I'm going to be home to do that. So I may need to do my grafting uh, on a work day in order to be home to put these cells inside of mating nukes uh, on a day. And that's kind of why I, I think this is a very handy calendar to use because I can project the entire queen rearing process around my calendar, my schedule, and also it keeps all of the B math uh, and that keeps you from making any mistakes here. You come further on down, you can see mating flights. So grafted queens will be mating in early March, and that's just about right. And if you uh, see down here, check for good weather, greater than 64 degrees, less than 11 miles an hour wind. I know you can't project weather out that far, but it is important to know that your average temperatures for mating uh, are pretty important for her to go out and mate. Um, and also in the mating nukes, when you take those splits off and you're putting a smaller clusters together, the average low temperatures is another very, very important part of this calendar. Now I am going to show you one other thing that I use. Like why do I use February 14th as my first grafting day? Well, historically for me, it's been uh, where I've had the most success. A few years prior, I've tried it the week prior on the 7th and I just didn't get good mating success. That was probably due to low drone quantities. or the drone quantities were not mature enough and populating the drone congregation areas as sufficient quantities to get successful mating. I have another graph that I use over on this page, uh, and this is the pulled off of a website, and I think I have it listed down here, weatherspark.com, and this is for Jacksonville, Florida. The uh, historical average highs and average low temperatures in the winter in Jacksonville. And if you come down, uh, scroll it down so you can see the dates. So February 14th is right here in the middle of this column. So our, our lowest of the low is in mid-January and we start creeping to around 50 degrees in the middle of the night uh, in mid to late February. And you see as we end February, we're at the average low of 51. This is kind of the sweet spot in order for small clusters of nurse bees to keep that brood warm enough in order to have a successful mating new colony. So that's the other part here is to look out to understand your average temperatures. Now, there's not much we can do when we get cold snaps and things like that. You can kind of look 10 days out uh, and you do get pretty good weather uh, predictions. I'll just open up another tab here for you and I go into Jacksonville and let me show you. If I go to the 10 day forecast uh, from today, uh, and this is just using weather underground, you can see we're already uh, going all the way out to the 11th of February and we've got a warming trend going all the way out into that time frame. So while we could get some colder weather after that in early March, it looks like we may have bottomed out uh, with the weather we had uh, a few weeks ago in the middle of January. So that is my mating calendar. Um, 
If I come a little bit further down uh, at the very end, this is just kind of at the end of the cycle after mating, when to check for eggs, and then I can see on the 13th of March, uh, one week of laying, two weeks of laying, and three weeks of laying. This is when you're mating nukes. If you don't see any eggs by this point, you're into the um, laying worker scenario because if you haven't added any additional brood, and that's when you might need to cycle through your mating nukes. But what, what's really great is I can just copy this calendar for every single graft day. So if I do some grafting on the 14th, I need to save this calendar and, and not modify it because everything is made off of that grafting. But if I do some grafts one week later, all I've got to come down do is come and duplicate this sheet and I just create a copy of it. I can rename it. And typically what I would rename it, uh, rename the sheet is the date. So let's just say I do some grafting on 21 Feb. Um, graphs and now this sheet I'm going to come up here and say the 21st is the date of the graphs and now this seat sheet is automatically saved and uh, and I won't modify it and I can always go back to the first one that was for the 14th and then for every grafting day I'll have its own calendar and I can see in the sequence uh, and of course when you put your cells inside of your mating nukes you need to take notes on what the graft day was so it can match up to the expectations uh, for your checking your eggs and looking for successful mating flights and to keep track of the weather when uh, they might be mating so you do not disturb them so much. So anyway, that's what the subject of this video today was, is this queen um, management calendar. I'll put a link to it, like I said, in the description below. You can go ahead and copy it, make a, a sheet of your own inside of Google Sheets or put it in Excel. It'll work there too. Uh, you know, maybe your weekends are different than mine and you can make them a different color. Uh, maybe your technique of creating the starter and finisher is a little bit different than mine and you can have your starter ready uh, based on, on your techniques. But I wanted to share that with you. This is also an important part of my queen uh, rearing process. Uh, I've evolved it over the years, but it's really, really helped me keep track of the cells that I'm grafting and what to expect and to manage uh, my queen rearing process. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed this and we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.